Ice from Space, starring Edmund Ryan. This is it, gentlemen, the Arrow B-76. Photographed from our takeoff compound two days ago. Our radar followed her for 76,200 miles into outer space. Then our instruments were no longer able to keep track of her. According to our monocalculator, calculator, everything within the ship was behaving perfectly. That's the last you saw her? That's the last, sir. Sergeant, the lights, please. For 48 hours, there hasn't been a trace of the AR-76. Perhaps, Congressman, uh, your investigating committee should uh, look into the problem of who repealed the law of whatever goes up must come down. I don't consider this a laughing matter, Major. There are millions of dollars of taxpayers' money involved here. The point is passed where we can laugh at such matters. Congressman, I think both the Major and myself understand your position. As head of the scientific division here, I'm more concerned right now with the fact that we have a new unexplainable phenomenon. That rocket must come down. The question is, when? You see, Congressman, our instruments indicate that if the rocket maintained its uh, original path of ascent, it must come down within 50 miles of this post. <laughs> but when? Well, I suppose there's nothing to wait for now except the reports to come in. It'll be interesting to discover when that rocket does come down what happened to our little passengers. What about these mice? Well, according to the boys at the rocket ramp, uh, these particular mice they call the... Uh, Flying Mice Brothers. Mice Brothers. It's just a joke the men had among themselves. Joke, eh? These mice went up three weeks ago in the old AR-75, 50,000 miles, Congressman. I've learned a great deal of useful information from their reactions. A year ago, we were able to send them out 500 miles, then 2,000. Now that we're probing outer space, there's quite a lot of tension among all of us. And these little jokes, such as the Mice Brothers, help to relieve this tension. How much would you reckon the AR-76 cost, Major? Well, I'm sorry, sir, but I couldn't rightfully say. As you know, the 76 was designed as the first rocket to carry a man, though it hasn't done so yet. If you're going to be close-mouthed about it, I can always appeal to Washington. Well, my orders confine me to uh, the launching of the rocket, nothing more. I simply followed my instructions. Your father would have known how much was involved. Your father would have made it his business to know everything about the project. <laughs> Yes? Major, they've tracked the AR-76. She's down. Where? On the Baker Ranch. Uh, they called in, said their kids have already located it in the Mesquite. Kids? Sergeant, get Lieutenant Garcia to take a detail over there right away. Yes, sir. Get the Baker family on the phone. Tell them that AR is government property and to keep their kids away from it. Yes, Major. Have him take a recovery group out there and get a report back to me as fast as possible. Now, get a move on. Well, that's it. The Baker Ranch is not more than ten miles from here. Well, she finally came down. But why the delayed return? She should have come down within hours after the takeoff. What do you make of this, Dr. Meshkel? It's strange. Very strange. Are you making any guesses as to what we'll find inside? Not just now. I think we better wait and see it for ourselves. Well, I hope it's not badly damaged. After all, these things cost lots of money. One o'clock... Any idea how long before we'll be able to see it? We'll wait for word from the recovery group, Congressman. How much longer, Major? I have no idea. Sergeant? Yes, any, sir? Any word from that recovery group? Not a word, Major. I want to be notified immediately when they're sighted. Immediately. Is that clear? Yes, sir. It's been over two hours since Dr. Meshkov left with the lieutenant. Any idea what might be detaining them? Could it be anything serious? It might be anything. Anything from a broken axle on the tow truck to a broken head. How should I know? I'm sorry, Congressman. I didn't mean to jump on you. The heat, the pressure... And my bad manners. Perfectly all right, perfectly all right. Thanks. One gets used to that sort of thing on the investigating committee. 
But please try to understand my position. I believe I do understand it, sir. The enormous amount of funds being requested by your superiors for these so-called top-secret projects is beginning to raise questions. You military people are secretive about everything except the amounts of money you require. Naturally. And quite naturally, my committee became curious, quite curious about these new explorations into outer space. They've expressed a desire to know why money is being expended for such items of expense as your flying mice brothers, as you put it. I'm sure your father wouldn't have countenanced this. Will you please stop telling me how my father would have done things? He was a great man, Major. A credit to his country and to you. This is my problem, not his. I'm running this project, not my father. Yes? Our retrieving group reported back, sir. They've taken the rocket over to the barn on the Baker Ranch. Why did they do that? Order a jeep for me. If you're going to the ranch, I'd like to go with you and see the rocket or what's left of it. As you well know, this project is... is top secret. I'll have to ask you to remain here until we make our preliminary examination. Now, see here, Dodger. I represent the Congress of the United States, and I'll brook no interference from the military. I'm sorry, sir, but I'll have to refuse you. And don't tell me what my father would have done in my position. According to the Baker kids, according to them, when they pried off the back plate of the rocket, they found this object inside. And the mice, dead, sir, frozen still. There was no evidence that the rocket had been tampered with during its ascent or descent. Doctor, what is the possibility that something or someone could have dismantled this projectile? Somewhere out in space, and then uh, put in this thing. <laughs> Common sense would make me say that such a thing is an impossibility. Yet, here it is. It was not in the AR-76 when it went up. Now, here it is. Who is to say how such things happen? Then what next? I must have time. I must analyze this substance. Test it. See what's made of. Discover its properties. Very well, Dr. Meshkov. My facilities are at your command. I don't know. Perhaps it came through the hull while it was in a gaseous or liquid state. Then, once inside, it turned solid. Do you mean it may have seeped through the metal? I'm only guessing, Major. I've arranged to have Lieutenant Garcia move it here in order that it may be further investigated and analyzed. Sort of in isolation. I have never seen anything like this. Harder than steel or any new in alloys. Glowing like molten lava. Yet, freezing the very air about it with growing intensity. Notice how cold it is in here, Major. It must be 20 degrees colder than outside. Let's get back to the office. Yeah. Lieutenant Garcia, the film from the camera that wore in the rocket. Right here, sir. Good. Get him to the left. Wait. Yes, sir. found out. Well? I'm afraid nothing. Nothing more than we knew before. It's a strange thing we have on our hands. You don't have to tell me that. But I've got a report back to Washington. I want something concrete. I can't send a wire saying we have something strange in our hands. Congressmen have sent stranger messages than that. 
Mr. Burns. Now, see here, don't you? I've taken about all I can stomach from you. You've been rude and uncooperative. And I'm going to blow the lid off this thing. You'll do nothing of the kind. I'm slapping security on you and this entire project. This whole area is under quarantine. You're not moving out of here or sending any messages until I clear with Washington. Major! Major Dozier! Major! Now, what is this, Sergeant? It's the photo lab, sir. They, they say Get that... to the point. Lieutenant Garcia, sir. What's happened to that film? It's not the film, sir. It's something happened to the lieutenant. Sergeant, speak up. He keeled over, sir. All of a sudden. He's dead, sir. He's, he's frozen to death. Major? What can I do for you? Get me out of here for one thing. Oh? Well, I've been willing to go along with you. Unaccustomed as I am to living in an encampment, in sleeping bags, eating out of cans, it's been a good experience for me, a good experience. For three days. But this is your job, your problem, not mine. Oh, thanks. And I think it's about time I got back to Washington. Sort of a case of cold nose as well as cold feet, sir. If huh? you wish to put it that way, then why not? With that unearthly substance in the barn near the camp, why, in three days, it's frozen hundreds of miles of desert land in the middle of the summer. Seventy-five miles. Seventy-five or a hundred and seventy-five, what does it matter? Whatever it is, there doesn't seem to be anything you can do about it. It's turned this country into the Antarctic in no time at all. And with worse effects. Well, don't you consider the death of those twelve men or those youngsters, those poor Baker children? Don't you consider this a serious matter? Now, look here, Congressman, let's get one thing straight. All personnel are quarantined on this base. No one. No one moves out of here under any conditions until we've seen this thing through. And that means you. Major? Yes, Wilson? They're making another food drop for us, sir. Well, that shows that they still have confidence in us. I'm afraid you don't have much confidence in me, Mr. Burns. Can't help thinking how your father would have handled this situation. Now, look here. As a military man, I am supposed to extend you my respect. But you've got to stop needling me. I am perfectly aware of what a fine soldier my father was. However, I have my own career to make, and it will not be as Colonel Dozier's son. My career and my reputation I will make on my own or not at all. Of course, of course. I, I didn't mean to imply that you couldn't handle this problem. Then leave me alone and let me do it my own way. I have my orders and I intend to carry them out. May I ask, just what are your orders? To hold until we do away with it. Or it does away with us. Don't you? Yes? Don't you? What's wrong, Doctor? The barn. You must come to the barn quickly. The blue ice is becoming critically active. <laughs> Doctor? Well, after the first 24 hours, it seemed the radiations seemed to level off. Like an invisible glacier, slowly moving, growing. But now, its radiations have doubled in intensity. Double, but how? Why? Six hours. In less than six hours, it contaminated more of the surrounding area than it has in the last three days. It's unbelievable. Yes. Even with it stretching out before your very eyes, mile after mile of frozen desert, gleaming under a hot sun at sub-zero temperature. You can't go on like this. It mustn't. It'll happen when it's sighted by some tourist or engulfs one of these desert towns. Fortunately, this mesa was selected originally because it was isolated. Now I've made this whole zone a heavily guarded area, 500 miles wide. Well, but with its increased intensity, there isn't much time. Before the fringe will envelop a town here, a railroad junction there, and then the panic will begin. I know, I know. 
There must be some way. There has to be a way. It's no use. No use. We have tried everything within our resources to destroy it, to change its substance. Heat, acids, firepower. Do you have any idea what it, what it is? A molecular structure completely unknown to us. Neither vegetable nor mineral. I believe this frozen thing may be alive. And possibly in communication with others on the periphery of outer space. Others like that one? Why not? What would they want here? The heat and the warmth of our world, which has been previously denied them by the protective gases that surround us, until we provided them with a conveyance. The AR-76, self-powered, designed to provide protection from the friction of descent. But who can know their real purpose? The only thing that matters now is the removal of this cosmic substance. Its destruction before it destroys us and contaminates the Earth. Mile by mile. Our farms. Our cities. Where do we go from here? Need a little more time to think. If only we had more money for large-scale experiments. Possibly we could solve this thing. Washington tells me our appropriation won't allow it. Well, I'll see that you get your appropriation the moment I set foot in Washington. The government must do more to encourage scientific research. I thought of that month ago. I'm afraid it's a little late now, Congress. There's got to be a way out. There's got to be. Nothing at all. Ozone area keeps expanding and growing faster and faster. We are now in the middle of a patch of ice and snow 300 miles in diameter. I think we are beaten. This can't be. We can't give up now. What would you have us do? Sit here until the whole country becomes, becomes a frozen wasteland? Uh, not unless you have any other suggestions, Major. As for me... I am tired. Doctor, is the AR uh, patched up yet? Yes, the damage was relatively minor. It's all fixed up again, ready to fly. Why do you ask? Uh, no reason in particular. Surely you don't have a mind sending the 76 up again? I don't know. That would be madness. Doctor, we can't sit on our hands. Something must be done. What can we do? It might come down with still another piece of ice in it. And there, where would we be? He's right. If that's what you're thinking of, get it out of the mud. Uh, gentlemen, if, if uh, you'll excuse me, I've got some work to do. I'm going to my quarters. Good night, Mr. Burns. Good night, Doctor. Good night. I may be permitted, Congressman. You have been riding the Major awfully hard. Yes, I'm afraid I have. He has an enormous responsibility, not only to the men on this post, but with this new thing, perhaps, to the rest of the country. Major is a very good man. He'll solve it somehow. I have the greatest confidence in him. Yes? Still no sign of Major Tozier, sir. He's not in his quarters nor on the post anywhere. Thank you. I don't understand it. It's been over for hours. Where could he be? I hope nothing has happened to him. Sergeant Wilson. Yes, sir? Have you tried a make -in? See if the Major's there. Uh, no, sir. I, uh, I haven't tried there yet, but I will now. Good. Call me right back. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm going to find out. Wilson! Sergeant Wilson! Yes, sir? 
What was that? I don't know, sir. It sounded like the AR-76. AR-76? But that's impossible. It's not impossible, Congressman. Sergeant gets over to the major squatter, something double. See if his executive officer knows anything about his whereabouts. Yes, sir. Get me through to the bacon. Lieutenant Hallisey here. This is Mestro. What's going on out there? Sounds crazy, sir. But the AR-76 just took off. Wait. Let's get out to the bacon lunch. I tell you, sir, I don't understand. The corporal tells me that, that the major came in here and gave instructions to, to load the ice into the AR-76. The corporal just followed out orders. Got three men and they loaded it in. Then the major gave orders to clear the field. Walked over to the 76 by himself. One of the men said he, he thought that he saw him climb in. And for the next thing we knew, it took off. Somebody that fool took off in that rocket. It hasn't been fully tested. I'm afraid, Congressman, that that fool did just that. We found this in his quarter, sir. Here, Dr. Meshkov, I hope this does not spoil any of your fancies, scientific theories, but it seemed to me like the only way. I know that eventually you would have found out all about the eyes from space, but who knows how much longer we would have to wait. The only way to make sure seemed to be to go along with it and blow up the whole thing in outer space. Had I sent up the rockets alone, it might have come down again with the same cold cup. Goodbye and Godspeed. That's all there is. That's his last will and testament. I guess that makes two dozers our country has to be thankful for. Yes, Congressman. Two dozers. Uh -huh.